In today's lecture, we will see the Pure Aloha protocol. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. In today's lecture, we have three outcomes. Let's see what are they. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number one, we will know the various multiple access protocols. Outcome number two, we will understand the collision. And outcome number three, we will understand the Pure Aloha protocol. Before going into the collision and Pure Aloha, let's know the various multiple access protocols. We know the multiple access protocols are of three types. Number one, random access protocols. Number two, controlled access protocols. And number three, channelization protocols. In today's lecture, we are going to see the Aloha protocol. You may be wondering in the title it is mentioned as Pure Aloha and here it is mentioned as simply Aloha. We will deal with it shortly. Let's start with Aloha. Aloha is a random access protocol. It means any station can send the data at any time. And actually Aloha was designed for wireless LAN but it is also applicable for shared medium. Aloha when it was created it was mainly designed for WLAN that is wireless LAN. In order to connect two different places using wireless technology they actually invented Aloha but it is also applicable for shared medium. When we talk about point number one, that is it is a random access protocol, obviously any station can transmit data at any time. What if two or more station transmit the data at the same time? When two or more station transmit the data at the same time, it leads to collision. In this, multiple stations can transmit data at the same time and can hence lead to collision and the data being garbled. And this data will not be useful data. It will be either lost or corrupted. Now in the point number 3 it is mentioned as it leads to collision. So we will see what is collision now. Suppose if there are two stations, station A and station B. And station A and B have a common medium that is the shared medium. So this is the medium where A and B are going to transmit their data. What if A and B send the data at the same time? Suppose A has a frame which is named as A frame and B also has a frame which is named as B frame. Just observe A is also sending the data and B is also sending the data at the same time. What happens when A and B send their data at the same time? Boom! It leads to collision. So the frames are either lost or corrupted. Therefore it becomes unusable. We know Aloha is a random access protocol so any station can transmit data at any time. So obviously it leads to collision. Somehow Aloha protocol has to handle this. We will see how collision is handled by Aloha protocol shortly. Before that let's see what are the various types of Aloha. We have basically two types of Aloha. Number one pure Aloha and number two slotted Aloha. In today's lecture we are going to focus only on pure Aloha. Before going into the theoretical perspectives, let's understand what is pure aloha. In this scenario, we have four stations, station 1, 2, 3 and 4. We have a shared medium and this shared medium is common for station 1, 2, 3 and 4. And this is the timeline. So this time is also common for everybody but for understanding purpose it is mentioned separately. But actually the time is common for all the stations and the medium is also common for all the stations. Let's assume station 1 is now placing its frame on the medium. At this time station 2 is not placing anything, station 3 is not placing anything and station 4 is also not placing any frames on the shared medium. Obviously it will not lead to collision. This will be a successful transmission because station 1 alone is transmitting its frame, station 2, 3 and 4 are not transmitting. So frame 1.1 that is station 1's first frame will not be collided. Let's see this part now. In this case, let's assume station 3 has started its transmission here. At this time, nobody is transmitting the data. So this data is being transmitted, but this time station 2 is coming into picture and placing its frame on the shared medium. So what happens? These two will be colliding with each other. Meanwhile, station 4 is also placing its data on the shared medium at this time and station 1 is also placing its data at this time. If you observe between this time period, there are four frames on the channel. Obviously, these frames will be colliding with each other. So this is the duration of the collision. Why this is the duration of the collision? Because when it is starting its transmission, there is no collision because nobody else is participating in the transmission. After this time also, nobody else is participating in the transmission except station 1. If you observe, this is the period where all stations are transmitting. So this is the collision duration. 
and when we see this scenario, station 2 at this time has started its transmission and no station is placing their frames on the medium, so it is going without any problem. At this time, station 4 is placing its frame on the medium. At this time, the channel is having both the frames at the same time. So this will also lead to collision and the collision duration is, this is not the time for collision because it's free, the channel is free. Collision duration will be up to this. If you observe this part, there is no station A or station 2 or station 4 is transmitting. So station 3 is putting its frame on the channel and there is no collision for station 3. I hope now you can understand pure aloha because any station can transmit their data at any time. If you observe, station 1 alone is transmitting. There are chances for station 2 or 3 or 4 can transmit at this point, but they are not doing it because any station can transmit the data at any point of time. So station 2 and station 3, station 4, in fact station 1, these frames are colliding with each other. But here only station 2 and station 4's frame are colliding with each other. Here there is no collision. Let's see the theoretical aspects of pure aloha. Pure Aloha allows station to transmit whenever they have data to be sent. It means whenever they have the data, any time it can send the data. When a station sends data, it waits for an acknowledgement. And this is obvious because once the acknowledgement is received, it understands that the data has been received by the receiver without data loss or collision. What if the acknowledgement is not received on time? If the acknowledgement doesn't come with the allotted time, then the station waits for a random amount of time. Please note, the station waits for a random amount of time, which is called as the back of time. And then it resends the data. So each station will wait for a random amount of time in order to prevent a collision. What if they wait for a fixed amount of time? If it waits for a fixed amount of time, obviously there will be collision. In order to reduce collision, Pure Aloha is using a strategy called waiting for a random amount of time. That time we call as a back of time because each station will wait for a random amount of time, which is not fixed. Since different stations wait for different amount of time, that is the random amount of time, the probability of further collision decreases. I hope now you can understand this point. And the throughput of pure aloha is maximized when the frames are of uniform length. We know the framing are of two types. One is fixed size framing, other one is the variable size framing. And the throughput of pure aloha is obviously maximized when the frames are of uniform size. It means it is of fixed size framing. Because any station is going to transmit the data or frames at any point of time. If the frames are not of uniform size or uniform length, obviously the chances for collision is high. We will see more about pure aloha. Whenever two frames try to occupy the channel at the same time, there will be a collision and both will be garbled. Both means both the frames will be garbled. Let's assume one station is about to complete its transmission. That time another station is placing its first bit on the channel. It leads to collision. We know that station is going to complete its transmission and because of this interrupt, everything will be chaos. If the first bit of a new frame overlaps with just the last bit of a frame almost finished, that's what I told you. Both frames will be totally destroyed and both will have to be retransmitted later. Let's see this point with an example. In this example, if you observe, this is the time where B has started its transmission and B is about to complete. Just see, we have only few more data with frame B. But this time A has started its transmission. So because of this, there will be a collision which we have seen in the previous diagram. So because of this, A's frame and B's frame will become unusable because they become garbled. Let's see another scenario. This is the time where A has started its transmission and A is about to complete here. But at this time, C has started its transmission. So A will be garbled as well as C will also be garbled. So this is an example where all the three frames are becoming garbled. So if you observe, at this time A is beginning its transmission and colliding with B's end frame that is, B's end collides with A's beginning because this is B's end, it is colliding with A's beginning. And here A's end is colliding with C's beginning. I hope now you can understand this. Let's continue seeing pure aloha. The vulnerable time is 2 into frame transmission time. That is, it's 2 times of the frame's transmission time. I will explain you this with the example. Just see here, let's assume this A frame wants to be transmitted without any collision. Let's say 
if this is the time it is required for A to be transmitting without any collision, without any interrupt. So this is the frame's transmission time. So this is 1 TFR and the previous time should also be free. That is we need one more TFR. Then only we can say this frame will be successful. In other words, if this is the time where A wants to begin its transmission, so A needs this entire time. This entire time is the frame transmission time. So this frame also needs the previous TFR to be free. Why? Because if somebody else has placed their frame, again this will be colliding with that frame. So we want the previous TFR should also be free. So the vulnerable time is two times of the frame's transmission time. This is one time and we want the previous time also to be free. Then only this A can send its frame without collision. And we will see the formula for throughput. The formula for throughput is G into E part minus 2G, where G is the number of stations that wish to transmit at the same time. So when we say G, if there are two stations want to transmit at the same time, just equate G is equal to 2 here and here and we will get the value. So anyway, I am not going to deal much into this throughput formula here because we need this only for solving problems. So I am not going to elaborate on this now. We will see about this when we solve some problems. Also, the maximum throughput will be 0.184 for G is equal to 0.5. 0 0.5 0 0.5 means it's 1 by 2. It means at this frame transmission time TFR, when half station transmits, then we will get the maximum throughput. In other words, when we have half station in this transmission time, we will get the maximum throughput. And that's it guys. I hope now you know what are the various multiple access protocols. We understood what is collision. And we also understood what is pure aloha. I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching.